Well, it's fairly complicated. Let me give you the condensed version. The Fatui again? We can't go anywhere without them causing trouble. But what if the Fatui finds out you've lost your power? Won't they try to take advantage of the situation? <laughs> That's why it has to be our little secret. No one else can know or we're asking for trouble. Look, I wish I could offer you some sort of consolation, but I won't lie to you. With multiple factions closing in, there's nothing comforting about the situation we're facing. Still, all you need to do is focus on your goal. You can leave the complicated matters to me. I can also step in on the Pyro Archon's behalf. There's a limit to what I can accomplish, but I'll help you however I can. <laughs> there's no need to be so modest, Ian-san. Your incredible strength has long been a well-known fact. You're the pride of your tribe. Archon, I... I'm sorry about before. You have so much on your plate. So much that you have to worry about. But all I could do was focus on my own feelings. You have nothing to be sorry about. We all get overwhelmed by our emotions, myself included. Your reaction to Kachina's disappearance, I... I understand that feeling very well. Well, now that we have Kachina's ancient name, let's go track her down. Follow me. What is this place? Hey, isn't that Atea's talisman? <laughs> Good eye. This is where I store all the various mementos I've collected. Wow. I've never seen this place before. There are so many things in here. It looks like there are items from every tribe. Collecting them must have taken a lot of effort. I suppose you could think of it as a hobby of sorts. In Natlan, everyone grows up listening to the stories of heroes, and physical items do a far better job of preserving those stories than our own memory. <sighs> now, I still have some preparations to make for the ceremony, so feel free to take a look around in the meantime. If you're curious about an item, I'm more than willing to tell you about its origins. Oh, that belt is bigger than Paimon's head! The Collective of Plenty are known for their bodybuilding competitions and contests of strength. This belt is a symbol of great honor within the tribe. The association with strength might also have been the reason the original belt was extremely heavy. It was difficult for even two people to lift. And even if a warrior had the strength to put it on, wearing it for any length of time would still leave them gasping for breath. Sounds like it. So the owner of the original belt, Katera, commissioned a craftsman to make a copy identical in appearance but far lighter in weight. That is the belt you see before you. He would often wear this version when training in order to protect his waist. Or he made a lighter version so he could wear it all the time and show it off. There are so many jars and potions around here. Do they have anything to do with alchemy? 
know. Those belong to the Masters of the Nightwind. Their ceremonial tools used to amplify the ability to communicate with the Night Kingdom and the Wyab. Yamaya is an expert in this field, and she taught me a lot. Even though she appears stoic and serious, she actually has a keen sense of humor. The tools you see here are quite traditional. Her students found them outdated, so she passed them on to me. The contents of the jars aren't all that special. Oh, uh, except the big jar in the middle. That's what she really wanted to give me. Ooh, must be something really cool! What's inside? Grape juice. Huh? <laughs> it's quite tasty, although probably expired by now. Hey, there's a fishing rod here! It must have belonged to the people of the springs. That's right. It belongs to a legendary fisherman named Matavaru. I have his entire set of fishing equipment, actually. He and I met in a tavern. He told me about a particular kind of giant fish and his meticulous plan to catch it. In his eyes, I saw a hunger and a strong fighting spirit. To him, the sea was the battlefield upon which he staked his honor. So, did he do it? The next time I saw him, he was covered in scars. It turned out the fish he sought had been corroded by the abyss. He managed to kill the fish, but sustained a serious injury in the process, which meant he could never go deep sea fishing again. Can a fisherman claim victory if he fails to bring back his catch? That's what he asked me in the end. Well, Paimon thinks he won. That was my answer as well. The experience was far more valuable than the prize itself. In the end, he didn't want his tools to go to waste, so he gave them to me. Wait, that means you also know how to fish. <laughs> Maybe we can go head to head sometime. Atea's talisman. I'm sure you're familiar with this one already. Atea was rarely ever without it. The talisman brought her a lot of luck in battle. Make sure to handle everything with care. This cup, for example, it's heavier than it looks. This flower looks like it's thriving. You must be good at taking care of plants, Archon. This fishing basket looks familiar. Whoa, this weapon is huge! Which tribe did it belong to? Ah, uh, that weapon belonged to Tainoch, a hero from 500 years ago. Strictly speaking, he didn't belong to any single tribe. That's because even before the disaster with the Abyss broke out, he had already been exiled. Exiled? It was a punishment, imposed out of necessity, but he accepted it all the same. He believed it was what he deserved. When the Abyss attacked, the tribes found themselves in urgent need of a powerful figure to lead them into the battle, and there was no one more courageous or resolute than him. He united the six tribes and accomplished great feats throughout the war. Ultimately, he perished, and because he had already lost his ancient name, the Ode of Resurrection was unable to bring him back. And so, he was laid to rest, alongside the countless warriors and civilians who lost their lives, buried in the soil of his native land. Wow, he sounds like a true hero. <laughs> Indeed, even now his story is told throughout the land. The powder still needs some time to settle, so let's wait a little longer. Well, what do you think of my collection? Do you feel like you have a better understanding of Natland's culture now? Yeah! If each item represents a different story, seems like Natland's really been through a lot! Does every item hold a special memory, just like Atea's talisman? That's right. The items in my collection actually serve a similar purpose to the ancient names passed down among the tribes. 
they demonstrate the true shape of time. The shape of time? Most people perceive time as a linear concept, almost like a straight line that can only move forward. We cannot change the past or predict the future. But there's also a different theory, one that I believe to be closer to the truth. Namely, that the past, present, and future all exist at once. At once? Paimon's not sure she understands. Uh, let's say your journey ended right now. Thinking back on your experience in each nation, which one would you say was the most important? Exactly. Even at the end of your journey, the things you experienced along the way don't cease to exist. They become part of who you are. Take out a portion of that journey, and you would likely make very different decisions, and eventually arrive at a very different destination. The future is the same way. It exists even though it has yet to come to pass. We just lack the means to perceive it. Of course, there are those with the power to foresee the future. They simply call it by a different name. Fate. <laughs> You're quite familiar with that concept, I would imagine. Uh, that does kind of make sense. The future hasn't happened, but already exists. Humanity excels at living in the present, but too often we forget the past and neglect the future, while the pilgrimage and the Night Warden Wars lead us to a better future. Only by uniting the people of Natlan across countless eras can we fight back against an enemy as formidable as the Abyss. To come up with such a set of rules, the first Pyro Archon must have possessed a level of insight I can only imagine. That's correct. At first, he was a mortal man with no special power. After he ascended to the Divine Throne, he used it to borrow power from the heavens and establish the rules of Natlan, namely a framework through which ordinary people can ascend to Archonhood. By holding the pilgrimage, we're able to determine the strongest among us. And when that person ascends to the Divine Throne, their inner flame will awaken. In addition, the Sacred Flame will grant them significant knowledge and memory of this land. After all, that's how I came to know everything I just told you. So, it all comes down to the power of the Divine Throne and the rules. Wait, is that a family portrait? <laughs> yes. That's my mother, father, younger sister, and the little Saurians we raised. I turned a piece of my dad's leather armor into a canvas and commissioned a famous artist to paint our likeness. Your sister is so cute! It looks like the two of you are really close. I'm always having a hard time thinking of an Archon as an ordinary person, but seeing this portrait, it kind of makes sense now. It really doesn't look like there was anything special about you before. Oh, wait, is Paimon allowed to say that? A little late for that question, don't you think? Sorry! Paimon's so sorry! Paimon's mouth works faster than her brain sometimes! <laughs> it's alright. I'd never get upset over something like that. No matter what others may say, my past is a precious part of my identity. I'm forever proud of the life I used to lead. Becoming the Archon doesn't mean you sever ties with your family. The position just comes with a lot of responsibilities, so it impacts how often you get to see them. My father made the most delicious stew, so my sister would often bring me a large pot of his cooking, and we would sit on a blanket and eat it together. One time, we didn't close the door securely, and the Saurians you were raising ran into the room and knocked over the entire pot. My sister immediately burst into tears. The two troublemakers were going for the meat, but when they saw my sister's distress, they froze on the spot. I still remember the way they laid there, sulking like a pair of children, even after making such a mess. It was frustrating, but in the end, all I could do was comfort my sister and move on. Wow. Isn't that what being a family is all about? <laughs> I think about that story a lot, actually. As the Archon, I made a vow to defend this nation. And experiences like that, they remind me exactly what I'm trying to protect. Well, what happened after that? 
This portrait looks pretty old. Your sister must be all grown up by now, right? I believe she ended up working as an architect and artist. She built many houses and crafted many beautiful works of art. Anyway, that's enough about me. Now that the powder is settled, we can begin. Iansan, Mulani, Chaska, over here, please. Place the ancient name up there, and then we'll begin. Surely, as the echoes of life resound through heaven and earth, so too shall our stories remain eternal. Ancient name, take us to your fated bearer. Allow her to answer our call. Uh, am I hallucinating again? Kachina, are you okay? Huh? I, I'm not seeing things, am I? Is... is the Abyss playing tricks on me again? It's okay, Kachina. It's just us. We're trying to find a way to bring you back. Everyone, you have to listen to me. I've been investigating the Night Kingdom this entire time, and I figured out what's wrong. The Wyab is being affected by the Abyss. I was waiting for the Wyab to send me back, but then this really strong monster came in and almost killed me. The Wyab saved me, even though its power is weakening, so I've been hiding from the monsters while trying to find a way to help. The Night Kingdom has become a huge mess, though. I keep hearing these awful sounds and seeing really horrible things. Don't listen to those sounds, Kachina. The Abyss is trying to strip you of your sanity. All you need to do is stay safe and wait for us. We'll be there shortly. It's okay. I feel so much better now that I've had the chance to talk to you guys. You don't need to worry about me. I've never been strong or special at all, really. So I don't blame anyone for forgetting about me or leaving me behind. <laughs> Just knowing you care is more than enough. I'll find a way back. You don't have to put yourselves in danger to come rescue me. You're always like this, Kachina. Now's not the time to act tough. We're coming for you, and that's final. I don't know what lies the Abyss has been feeding you, but I'll tell you something right now. Nobody here sees you as a burden. You're a victor of the Night Warden Wars, a hero of Natlan. All you need to do is wait for us to rescue you, and you'll get all the applause and recognition you deserve. <laughs> I'm... I'm really scared. Everything's so dark and creepy here. And... I want to go home. Still, I don't want you to put yourselves in danger because of me. I don't want to hold anyone back ever again. All you need to do is place your trust in us, just like you always have. No one fights alone. We're not leaving you behind. Not ever. Yeah, we're so close, we can't call it quits now. Looks like we've lost contact. Now comes the most dangerous part. You have to traverse the Night Kingdom in your physical form. This entrance to the Night Kingdom was left behind after an abyssal invasion. Even a brief amount of time inside could expose you to corrosion. I know. I'm prepared for that possibility. All right, then I wish you all the best. I'll tell Koichi to be ready just in case she's very experienced in dealing with abyssal corruption. That face you just made. Don't tell me you two got into another argument. No, I just feel bad for creating more work for her. I'll go with them too, Archon. The more people, the stronger the party. Thank you so much for your help, everyone. It really means a lot that you're willing to brave these dangers with me. There's no time to lose, so let's get going. Now that I've lost my power, I won't be able to provide much practical support. But I can still keep an eye on the situation from here. Eonsan, I know it's unlikely, but if you encounter a situation you can't handle... That won't happen. 
I hope not. So we're underneath Natland right now? It looks nothing like Paimon was imagining. That's because in the distant past, Natlin was home to an incredibly advanced civilization ruled by dragons. Humans only established their own society after the fall of the dragons. So these are Saurian ruins? Wait, you mean like the Elemental Sovereigns? They had their own advanced civilization? Yes, a really long time ago. Very few records have survived until now, so no one really knows what the devices here are for. These ruins have been abandoned for a long time, but with the recent increase in Abyss activity, the installations around here have somehow been activated again. So what you're saying is... we're not in for an easy trip to the Night Kingdom. <laughs> no. It's going to be obstacle after obstacle from here on out. <laughs> Why are you all laughing like that? It's creeping Paimon out! It's the pre-adventure excitement kicking in! Right, guys? Of course. I'm eager to get started. Then let's go! We won't let anything stand in our way! Seems like the road ends here. How should we get across? As a professional trainer, I think you could stand to build up your endurance, Paimon. Professional trainer? Paimon thought you were a warrior from the Collective of Plenty! Well, that goes without saying. But I actually work as a sports coach. I provide professional guidance for many of Natland's popular sports. And I don't just mean physical training. I design nutrition plans as well. Ah, so basically no sugar, no soft drinks, no grilled meat. Yeah, yeah, we'll be here all day if you list them out one by one. It's much faster to just fo- Those guys look familiar. We've fought them before. Let's go. Show no mercy. Oh. Oh. Quietly now. Here comes the catch. There is no escape. <laughs> Busted. Ready, go! Shine down! Switch it.
Busted. Don't be scared. Here you are. Easy for you to say. This must be the entrance the Pyro Archon told us about. The one ripped open by the Abyss. Yes. There's something in the depths of this place that feels familiar, yet also foreign. We actually have to go in there? Okay, Paimon just needs to psych herself up. Don't push her through before she's ready! Hey! You don't have to drag Paimon! You're pulling too hard! Looks like we made it. This is the Night Kingdom. Huh. It looks so different from what I imagined in the stories. That overflow of energy is probably what trapped Kachina here in the first place. From this point forward, everything we know about the real world no longer applies. Anything can happen here. Paimon's more worried about how we're gonna make it out. We obviously can't go back the way we came. Do you see that patch of light on the ground? It's shining down from that fissure in the sky. Oh yeah, right in front of us. So that's coming from up there? Oh, it's so high up. Did we really fall that far down? Just like I said, our real world knowledge doesn't apply here. We fell all this way yet came out completely unscathed. If this was the real world, we'd have to climb our way back up to the entrance. But here all we have to do is stand underneath the light and offer a prayer. Th that's it? Right, right. We still got a job to do. So that means all we need to do is find Kachina and bring her to this location. Exactly. This light is streaming in from the real world. It's a link between the two realms. Hmm. The terrain looks difficult to navigate, and the visibility is not great either. How are we supposed to find Kachina in these conditions? Yeah, these floating black things don't look super friendly either. Those are all manifestations of abyssal power. Be careful. Ghost! A talking ghost! Calm down, I'm here to help. You're the ones who helped Vichama, right? Yes, I'm Vichama's friend, Malko. I was completely lost to this realm until I sensed a mysterious power calling out to me. It's like it was seeking me out, attempting to reassemble the pieces of who I used to be. Of course, it could only do so much. I'm sorry I can only appear before you in this imperfect form. No, we should be the ones apologizing. If the Spirit Speaker Stone hadn't become corrupted by the Abyss, we could have done much more. But we had to destroy it. Otherwise, Vichama and his tribe would have been in danger. Of course. Thank you for protecting him. I never imagined that, even after all these years, he'd still take such a risk for me. Under the power of the stone, it felt like our souls were connected. Turns out even our regrets were exactly the same. Whether in triumph or death, you want your best friend by your side. Exactly. That may not be in the cards for us, but it's not too late for you. You're looking for a young girl from the Children of Echoes, right? 
She's being chased by an embodiment of abyssal power. I'd like to help her while I'm still in this form, so follow me. Be careful. This place has been severely corroded by the abyss. Paimon didn't realize it had gotten this bad. It's like a seething volcano ready to engulf our world at any moment. Ouch! Quick, get back here. You can stick close to me. My power will be able to ward off attacks for the time being. We won't be able to keep this up. Let's try another route. This way. Just stick close. D did you hear that? Never mind. It was probably just my imagination. Don't scare Paimon like that! I heard it too. It was a voice from the Abyss. Ah! What did it say? It doesn't matter. It certainly doesn't harbor good intentions. Like our reunion will have to wait until we take care of these monsters. Good idea. Let's go. Quicker. Gotcha. Here go. Girl, you did so well. And most importantly, you weren't hurt. Should we start heading back then? Actually, I have a request. Will you come visit the Wyab with me? 
I can't exactly put it into words, but something's wrong with the Ode of Resurrection. And I know it has something to do with the contamination from the Abyss. That was the Pyro Archon's theory as well. Everything we've seen here certainly seems to back it up. In the Night Kingdom, there are six main totem poles representing the Wyab of each tribe. You can think of them like the body of each Wyab. Additional totem poles, like the ones around here, serve as proxies to which the Wyab can extend their consciousness. There are countless proxies scattered around the Night Kingdom. Through them, the Wyab can extend their consciousness over the entire realm and track down souls no matter where they roam. But if a proxy were to become severely contaminated, then a soul could become lost within the Night Kingdom. Judging by the current situation, I don't think we're dealing with just one contaminated proxy. Even if we could drive back the Abyssal power from one of them, that probably wouldn't even put a dent in the problem. Still, we can't just leave the Wyab to suffer. It's protected me this whole time. I agree. We might even manage to draw out the monster that's been hunting Kachina. Getting rid of the monster might slow down the deterioration of the Night Kingdom. Uh, <sighs> Kachina? What's wrong? N nothing. Just a headache. And that voice again, telling me to abandon the Wyab and leave this place. Maybe we really should leave. Kachina's already been here for too long. No, I... I'm fine. I don't plan on listening to that nonsense. I can hold on. Just up ahead. I'll lead the way. Besides, I can still fight, so please, help me out a little longer. Listen to me, Kachina. We'll come with you, but that's because we want to help the Wyab. Not because we have something to prove. You don't have anything to prove either. It's okay if you reach your limit. We'll be there for you. All right. The sooner we get this done, the better. We've already come all this way. So we might as well try to get to the bottom of this. Let's go. This way. I'll stay here and try to stall the Abyss Monster. All by yourself? That's too dangerous! It's all right. I may not be as strong as that monster, but I'm definitely more familiar with the area. Besides, I don't have much time left. If you're anything like my friend, I'm sure you're not particularly fond of goodbyes. So go. Achieve your goal, and return to the world where you belong. Thank you for everything. You're a true hero. <laughs> Thank you. No one fights alone. Does your head still hurt? Let me help you walk. I'm fine, I'm fine. You should know I'm made of stronger stuff than that. Right. The contamination is already too severe. It's preventing the Wyab from answering our calls. All right, get ready, everyone. Time to purge the abyssal energy from this place. Careful. We've got company. Already? You really think that puny soul could slow me down? Courage in the face of futility is pure folly. He tried to get in my way, so I disposed of him. You... you killed Nalko? He would have dispersed with or without me. Rather than worrying about him, I would urge you to focus on yourself. You may have defeated others of my kind in the past, but underestimate me now, and it will be to your peril. No... The power of the Abyss is intoxicating. The destruction it seeks captivates like a masterful work of art. I strive only for the opportunity to see it up close. 
I thought this naive little girl was an exception, but it turns out humanity is full of lambs willing to offer themselves up to the slaughter. That is the tragedy of your short lives. You understand nothing of all-encompassing power. Ancient names, pride, friendship, all empty ideas invented to give you a false sense of self-worth. They possess no power at all. The Pyro Archon created those grandiose ideals out of pure selfishness. Anything to avoid sharing power. Anything to avoid handing over the primordial gift to ordinary people like you. Don't believe me? Then ask yourself, why is the Pyro Archon strong beyond measure, while you, Kachina, remain so pathetically weak? I... I... Kachina! Give me your hand. Feel that? I'm right here next to you. Thanks, Moalani. You're right. I have nothing to fear. Because I'm not alone anymore! <sighs> You're right. Maybe comforting ideals don't have any power. But you also couldn't be more wrong. You've never had to work for your own strength, so you will never understand the true source of our power! What?! The courage we have to stand before you and not back down? It comes from our friendship. The power lies not in the ideal itself, but in our commitment to upholding that ideal, and in our decision to stand together and fight! Well said! Let's go, Kachina. It shouldn't take more than two of us to handle an enemy like this. Sorry in advance, but you... You deserve what's coming to you! There aren't many in Natlan who can beat us when we're together. It's time he got a taste of that kind of power. What he gets for underestimating you two. Fantastic work, Kachina. Absolutely fantastic. This makes me so unbelievably happy. I'm happy too, Moalani. Together we really are unstoppable. <laughs> huh? What's happening? My ancient name is glowing? But I thought I didn't bring it with me. It's probably a projection from the real world. But that doesn't explain why it's glowing all of a sudden. Wait, does that mean you're... That was a bold move. Diving headfirst into the fire to save your friend. Especially in a place so overrun with abyssal corruption. Still, seeing you pull it off... <laughs> was really something. Everything you said was exactly right. As isolated individuals, we stand no chance against the power of the Abyss. It took years worth of scars and lots of unnecessary suffering for me to understand that for myself. The Pyro Archon's plan will unite us as one. Everyone has a part to play. Only then, Will we have the power to defeat the strongest of foes? 
Who are you? Tupac, a warrior from the people of the Springs. I fought against the Abyss during the invasion 500 years ago. I've heard that name before. You were the giant who saved all of Matlan. Since you were able to awaken my words from your ancient name, that means you have fully embodied the aspirations of the Wyub. Under the name Umoja, you shall unite the tribes and save Natlan from its impending doom. M me As long as blood still runs through your veins, even the tiniest spark of steel against stone can ignite a flame. Its blaze will become one with our vision for Natlan. Even amid everlasting darkness, our bonds remain eternal. new. So that's what happened. What do you mean? Did you just figure something out? 500 years ago, they foresaw the very crisis we're facing now. Efforts to save Natlan started all the way back then. We can go over the details once we get back. We shouldn't linger here longer than we have to. I know bits and pieces, but I had no idea Mualani was also part of the plan. This sounds like something that's going to need a lot of explaining. Let's focus on saving the Wyub first! Okay, that should be enough. Wyub? Wyub? Can you hear me? I hear your voice, Kachina. My dear child. Great. Well then, I'm afraid it's time to say goodbye. I just wanted to make sure you were okay before we leave, but we can't afford to stay here any longer. I was going to ask why you bestowed an ancient name upon someone like me, but it's okay. I'll keep searching within myself for the answer. I'll never stop trying to improve my strength. One day, I'll live up to the hero you saw in me. You are already an outstanding child in my eyes, Kachina. No matter what happens. Huh? You are all my most beloved children. It has always been my honor to protect and nurture you. Your ancient name is just that. A name. Much like your parents chose to name you Kachina, I also gave you a name, but it need not define you. Focus on who you want to be. You are already worthy of your name. Now, you need only devote yourself to becoming a better you. The story of your ancient name is for you to continue. Just like your parents, my love for you will never change. No matter what the future holds. <sighs> Thank you, Wyub. It gladdens me to see the Pyro Archon's plan move another step towards completion. But it is time for you to leave this place. The situation here is getting worse. Go now, my children. Save Natlan on behalf of all you hold dear. I know we've never met before, Wyub, but I just wanted to say thank you for encouraging Kachina. It was exactly what she needed to hear. Whoa! What's going on? An earthquake? We're out of time. It's the power of the Abyss. Quick, we need to run! It's a Sealy! The Sealy opened the way for us!
You've done well. Now come home. saved us. But she's not here. Yeah, didn't she say she used it all up? She's still in the speaker's chamber. What we saw in the Night Kingdom was just her consciousness. So you're saying her consciousness did all that? Every great display of power comes at a price. <coughs> oh, you must feel terrible, Kachina. Just hold on. We'll get you to a doctor soon. Let's get back to the stadium. The Pyro Archon said she'd have a doctor waiting for us. I recommend getting a full checkup. Just to make sure no damage gets left behind. Hi, Mom feels okay. What about you, Traveler? Right. You always seem to do pretty well against the Abyss. Let's get going. We need to share what we learned in the Night Kingdom as well. Right. The Wyatt mentioned something about the Pyro Archon's plan. What is it exactly? I'll let her explain everything. We're all a part of the plan now. Every move we make from here on out will decide Natlin's ultimate fate. <laughs> 